Alright. Here we are. We are live on a Saturday afternoon. Who's in the room first? Who will be first in the room? I wish that would be like huge. Lisa, what's up? We got Lisa in the room. Lisa in the room. Lisa, Lisa in the room. She's first. What's up? What's up? What's a new name? Simon? Is that, is that how I say that? Uh, we, it wasn't like a party or nothing. It was just a, um, almost like a, a drill to, um, to help my friend out that's opening up, um, that he's reopening his place and, um, it's just kind of like, we, you know, we, we help set him, set up like signs and just like a, a soft opening for the employees, like a safety drill kind of thing. What's up, Shane? Sharon S. Yeah, we named him Ollie. to this comment but she put a UV archival UV archival spray over it Good morning from Sydney, Australia. Good morning. Morning. Oh, thank you. It's a friend of mine's. Uh, he has a little uh, clothing line for his kids. It's called Milk Money. You can go on milkmoney.com and purchase a hat for your little child. They got like t-shirts, I think, and like little cool, maybe backpacks for kids. I'm not sure. So, we are going to do a little flood coat. Something easy peasy. Something uh, for the new pe for the new peeps. Ona Vega, that's a new name. M Cats, what's up? Gina, Evelyn, Claudia. Morgan. How's everybody doing on this really crappy Saturday? It's rained all day. Tracy, what's happening? So if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. Um... I see a couple names in here that um, I haven't seen before, like that one that just popped up, Manuel and Austin. This is awesome. I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of new names. Um, please, first of all, subscribe if you can. That would be amazing. I'm trying to get to that 50K. 
Um, and just know that if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to ask. Um, we're just doing a little flood coat today. And what a flood coat is, is just basically you've done a piece of artwork and you love it and you want to put a coat of epoxy resin on. And we use Stone Coat Countertops Art Coat for that because it's an amazing, amazing resin. And that sound in the background is Erica packaging up your guys' packages. <laughs> and if you didn't know, we have an entire uh, resin one-stop shop in our studio, right, right in back of me there. So here's just uh, a really crappy Saturday, but we, we don't let rain dampen our mood. <laughs> dampen our mood. Tink, tink. Got me some Bud Light. Did they dampen on purpose? Mm-hmm. It's damp. <laughs> Don Young from... Man, there are some new names in here today. I'm... Um, Don Young... Poor, poor Hazel. Um, poor, let me think poor, here. Poor Shelby Lowry, is that new? There's poor a couple. Somebody from Austin was in here. I'm going to do actually two floods tonight because I need to flood the bubble bee. You get an extra flood coat. She's got to uh, flood coat the bumblebee. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a nice logo for us, like a, a symbol. So I wanted to use a B and I'm, I, I, I kind of want it to be like an old, like Art Nouveau type with just two colors, like black and gold or just black, but the lines are uh, very smooth, very not connected, I guess you could say. So I thought, Something like this to where everything is just kind of separated, you know? Like I said, this is just a little sketch, but I thought it'd be fun. This is actually gold and black. You can't see it on there. I love Austin, Manuel. We, uh, what? Where's the bee? What bee? Oh, it's on the floor in there. Next to the... The squares. Um, whenever we look, we're, we're looking at houses, just kind of seeing what's out there. And I went over to Austin, and Austin is expensive. We got humid in here, people. Okay. All right. So we have enough people in here to start this uh, party off right. I'm gonna start this thing off right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're gonna do some flood coats for y'all tonight on this Saturday. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. I'm gonna go over what doming is. All right. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine what it's like. It's manual. Yeah, manual. I just want to make sure I'm reading that right. I'm reading I'm reading from across my desk here. So, um, do you need help clearing that area or some new paper or something? We've got some cups for to put it up. Yeah, 
getting more stir sticks tomorrow. So in the meantime, and in between time, I have to use a, this a wooden stick, which is not my favorite. So if you guys didn't see this piece from yesterday, this is Ollie, AKA Sir Inks a Lot. He is currently available. Is that in frame? Um, you're like all just up in it. <laughs> can they see it though? What? Yeah, is they it can see all of focus? it. Yeah, they can see all of it. I Both love, cameras are directly on it, so. I love the bubbles. And people can see. Will you, while I'm mixing this rest, do you, okay, what are your thoughts on adding the little like bubble highlights with like a white Posca, like that little. Say that again? Bubble highlight. For what? The bubbles. Oh, you don't want to draw on that. No. No, that'll look tacky. After we put this resin on, it's going to look even more amazing. So, there's, <laughs> I can see where you put glue right here. You know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's just hitting the light. You won't be able to see it once though. Yeah. Everything hits it. Um, Thank you, Shelby. So on this one, I'm going to talk about doming and how to flood coat over an alcohol ink painting. And on the bumblebee, I'm going to go over how to fix it. If you have... Mm -mm, you're like... A piece that has these fish eyes. They can't see it. They're right here. You, you'd have to show it perfectly in the light. It's not. It's not perfect. Well, they're there. What's up, JJ? Are you still driving? First things first, I'm going to make enough resin for both of these. I'm going to be using art coat, so it's not going to be an issue um, to have so much resin in the pot for so long. This is an 18 by 36, and that is a 24 inch round. That took eight ounces. I'm going to do eight ounces and 16 ounces. It's probably way too much. Maybe not. So we're gonna mix up 24 ounces. No, we're not. Clara, what's up? So I'm gonna start with 16 ounces, actually. mainly because I don't want to mess up my measurements. And this one goes from eight ounces to 16 ounces, 24 ounces. You gonna go see Mike, JJ? Mike and Mitch? How, I don't think they're open on a Saturday. Mm -mm. Usually not. Kim Adam, what's up? Sue, what's happening? All of these measurements on the side are three parts, so I don't want to risk not doing we this. We forgot right. we were in the class. Oh no. Alright. You guys, your names. <laughs> We've had so many people in our classes. I apologize if I've forgotten somebody's name and it's not your real name. It's your YouTube name. I barely remember half these people's names on here, their real names. <laughs> he even says Clara's name wrong sometimes. So. Yeah. Okay. So when I was doing this piece yesterday, mm -hmm. feel free to go back and see that piece yesterday. Um, I have already spray sealed it with UV archival spray. It's very important to seal your piece 
um, with an archival spray before you move on because resin sometimes will fade your inks while it's setting up. But we already sealed it and so now I'm going to use Art Coat for this because it has like the best UV resistance that I found. Linda P. got jokes for JJ. <laughs> what happened? She said, while you're in Grants Pass, could you grab some resin, then head about 15 hours north to drop it off? Thanks. Okay, thanks. 15 hours north from Grants Pass? It's like Canada. Yeah. Isn't it? So if you um, have any sensitivity at all to resin, wear a respirator, your own PPE. PJ, we're not going anywhere right now. Okay. He is really standing there. How does he know how to make that sound? I don't know. He just he makes it to make it. Cujo, settle down, brother. There are times where that sound is very real. Yeah. But when he's standing there looking at me and not struggling at all. I'm like, you skeevy little pom-pom. Just lay down, Liz. Almost Canada. Oh boy, the cats are awake. Yay. Man, these guys, these cats are, they're starting to be like psycho cats, like breaking it. They broke a wine glass yesterday just because of jumping up onto stuff now. Like they're, they love to, to go the hard route. Like they're they don't just, kittens. yeah, they don't just jump up onto something. They jump up to the highest point. resin make sure you scrape the bottom of your mixing cup as well as the sides and scrape your stir stick off just to make sure everything is well incorporated with each other I think that's gonna be enough for that nope why didn't you mix it in that big bucket right there because I said this is all three to one and the only other measurement is done in three parts as well so like for the 24 ounces I would need, it goes from eight to 16 to 24. Mm -hmm. I would need it to go from eight to 16. You could 16. probably just use that and then go two up and then another two. Like it looks like that's, they're well, equal the, amounts. These look equal amounts, but from here to here and here to here, it's not. It's not. MCATS, it's impossible to Kitty proof this place. Yeah, that's not a thing. We don't have walls or doors. So for this amount of resin, you really want to mix for three minutes, and I didn't use my timer thing. But you can usually tell by looking in there 
you'll see swirls of resin. I'm seeing splinters. I'm using a wooden stick. I'm gonna start on that side so I don't get anything on this shirt. What what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna I'm gonna two part flood it. Well, why don't you turn it this way? It's, it's going to fall off in the back of this. You, you want to do that? But why wouldn't you just put it so? I didn't want to reach so over it and get any resin on this shirt. But I'll just two-part it and I'll just do it this side and then go. I don't understand why you don't just put it this way. It doesn't matter. I'm still reaching over it to get to the other side. To do this? Oh, I thought you meant turn it all the way around. Babe, you're doing it the hard way. You're, you're reverting back to your old ways. You guys, sometimes she just likes to do it the hard way. Babe, I didn't see a smile on your face. Hey, you guys. Look at these guys. Do you guys see these? Oh, that would be good. Gosh. I'm remembering why I don't like to use wooden stir sticks. It's splinters. Oh, goodness. He's jealous. He does. Some kind of treat. Alright, so this is a lot easier. Than the way I was going to do it. Jen Germs, what's up? Susan Campbell. And I'm pretty sure we have a couple bigger. have more than one dog at home. Do they get jealous of each other if one has a treat and the other one doesn't? That's what's happening. Ollie is still available. He is. This is an 18 by 36 uh, cradle board that we are actually thinking about selling on our website. We have a couple um, a couple clients I guess you could say that uh, stop in every now and again and buy pretty much uh, all of our square boards we haven't we haven't put them on the website because we, we're not sure of how big or how many we should get just to just to start it and uh, these people are really big fan of the square so we buy them out every time we just keep making them because we, we like to have them so that we can use them for you guys and for paintings and whatnot. I like using them better than canvas these days. I could keep this super thin and make it work on this, but I really don't want to risk any pitting. Yeah, let's not do that. And I want to make sure it domes. So if you are new to resin and need to know what doming is, I will go over that real quick. So what doming is, is when you have resin that goes to the edge of what you're working on and then it rounds. Bowie! Enough. And it rounds at the end, just at the edge. And to do that, the only thing you really need is a right angle 
surface, like these boards are sharp angle, they're not rounded. And you have to have a thick resin. Stone coat is perfect for that and also it's gonna keep my colors true. Um, so what you do is you push the resin up to the edge and just don't let it go over. If it does go over, it's not the end of the world. Um, you just wanna keep an eye on that. A lot of times what I'll do is like just get a thin amount of resin and just touch the edges because it'll self level all the way to that point. You don't really want to push like a big mound of resin to the edge because it, it'll be more likely to flow off. All right, where do you want to put this? And just wherever. Okay. It, it's not going to take a whole lot. Like most of this is going to, it's up probably already too much. Okay, well, I, you said you know, we don't want any pitting. Girl? What's up? Also, if you do like we're doing right now and do like two buckets of resin, um, you want to mix the two together a little bit. So I'm just going to, even though this is already all covered, I'm just running my hands through it to make sure that it's mixed into each other, the two parts. I have so many little splinters in this. It's frustrating from using that wooden. Mm -hmm. But I'll have more of our stir sticks in tomorrow. All right, so we got this domed. I'm going to hit it with some heat and then we're going to take it to the dust free zone and let it set up. We'll leave it there for probably um, just a couple hours. I'm going to push it all the way to the edge. Like, a little bit. We'll leave it for a couple hours and then we'll go back and we'll hit it with some more heat. To um, take care of any bubbles that are late risers. Resin self levels, so you don't really have to stress too much about it being the same across the whole surface. It's crazy how resin just brings out the colors even more. Mm -hmm. It's very thin over right here. Because it will flow to the edge itself because it's already got resin on it. I don't want it to flow over. Just doing this because you just ran your hands through it. So. Well, I was pushing more resin over there because you said it was low. Jeff is right, every time you touch the surface, you have to hit it with some heat. Every time you pull something out of it, you need to hit it with some heat because that'll introduce bubbles. Will you do one more pass?
JJ said, I'd love one for show. I hope Mikey feels better, Clara. I love Ollie so much, you guys. I will do another true color video tomorrow. Oh God. Is that one I to drip as I'm walking? Do we want to sand this? Yeah. Here is the bumblebee. Bumblebee. Thank you, Clara. Can you get me a different one? This is not. Yeah, what grade? This is old. 400. guys for this top coat we are using 400 grit sandpaper um, you don't want any sandpaper that's too gritty because you're not trying to unless you something landed in it and you need to sand it down like there's something high on it otherwise you just want something real low profile to just create some tooth for the next layer. And if you get like hairs in it, you can sand those out. Would you use a 400 just for hair removal? I mean, it did it. It, did it. it doesn't take a lot. There's some high spots. Because when you're doing, you're you're pushing a lot more in in an area that you know that you're. And the other parts aren't. You're just kind of going over it in the other parts. So if you had like a 220, it would eat away a little bit more in that area. Yeah. Um, is the honeycomb airbrushed? It's spray painted. We just used this stencil and some spray paint for that. At this point, we don't have any airbrush. We were really toying with the idea of adding airbrush to it, but he's, she sold before we got to that point. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll shoot you a text after cats. Um, Dorian asked, so, you're doing a second coat. So the reason why we're doing another. Yeah. So we had the initial coat and now we're doing another flood because I have some pitting where, as you guys noted, as I was doing it, the um, archival spray and the uh, blending solution hadn't dried completely so the resin didn't adhere to it I wish you guys could see that Let's, if I can just put it they're right here you're not going to be able to see that okay there's one right oh, yeah, there right there so put your finger up Yeah. Oh, now you 
you see it a little bit. Anyways, I have some low spots, some pitting, and you can't have that. So we're gonna flood Beatrice again. So we're gonna use this art coat that we already have mixed up from flooding Sir Inks a lot. Sir Inks a lot. You stay over there. Typically, if you have hitting issues on your first round, it shouldn't come through on the second because even if you have some pitting, it's got a layer of resin on it already. So that should lock in whatever it is that gave you the issues the first time around. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. It might. Linda said they could see it. So I had someone message me today about whether they should do a flood coat or not. I think so. Huh? I think so. And um, their issue was they had a little, a little something landed in their piece. And they asked if they should flood coat it. And my general rule with that is if it's not distracting, if it's not like in the middle of the piece. This on fire. Um, then I wouldn't worry about it. For instance, um, if something landed in this piece, like right here in the yellow, you'd be able to see it a lot more than if it landed like on this dark edge of the blue or somewhere in the black. Oftentimes when you're looking at your piece to, you know, after it's set up overnight and you're so excited and you go and open your Christmas present essentially to see how it did and you see something that has landed in it, you're looking straight down at it with the lights above you and you're not really taking into consideration that it's going to be on a wall, so the light's going to hit it differently. So I would hang the piece and look at it and see if it's still an obvious flaw. And if not, just leave it. Because every time you add resin to your piece, you risk something else landing in it, something else happening right. to it. Um, I can't tell where it was pitted anymore. jump up here. I'm going to put this stuff away. Let's 
It's like you really clean up after yourself if you, if you have kittens. <clears throat> Okay. That was just a quick little mini toot. Mini toot toot. That's a cute word. Toot for tutorial. Cute toot toots. My baby mini toot. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Plot twist. I shampooed my hair with aqua shampoo. I haven't even showed B yet. B. What? Oh gosh. Look at that. Very mermaidy. Thanks. I love my aqua locks. Um, how do you sign a piece like this? Uh, Susan, are you talking about the bumblebee or the Cujo? See how he stops when I talk to him? That's how I know that he's doing it for attention. Sometimes he does it for attention and other times he is having a serious cough attack. Anyways. So I would take it, so for example, if this was how I wanted my B to be displayed, I would sign it on the bottom right area of how I want it displayed. When you're doing like an abstract piece like a resin pour, it's a little bit more difficult because it's subjective. It's kind of up to the client how they want the piece to be displayed. Jeff, can you show us your sketch in color now? Yeah. Uh, Manuel in Austin wants to know if you can answer an air compressor question. Exactly, Evelyn. Thanks, Molly. It, this was just, like I said, this is a rough it doesn't look any different. <laughs> it's just, I did it in gold to see what it would look like, but um, cause I really want to do it on a gold background, like a piece of artwork um, and gold leaf. So this was just to see what it would look like if I did it in, in the style that I wanted to. Uh, yes, he can answer a compressor question. Maybe I'm not a I'm not a professional, but um, I went through a couple. What color, Linda? Is 150 psi too much for the small airbrush? I just That's want one air compressor to do both airbrush and a nail gun. Well, you don't you you. you there's going to be a regulator on it. There should be, so that you can turn it down for an airbrush. Because for an airbrush, you're only going to want any between 20 and maybe 45, depending on the type of airbrush you get. So a regulator would cut it down for a Yeah, you need a regulator and a moisture trap hooked to that thing. It should have one, depending on the type of... Uh, compressor you get. My brain Words is, are hard. Words are hard. Words are hard. Hi, Doris. How many PSI is ours? Is ours... Yeah, that compressor. It's down there. Oh, it's it goes pretty high. So at least 150? Yeah. So the one that we use is at least 150. It's a good size airbrush. I mean, a good size compressor, and we use our airbrush. But because, as Jeff said, we have a regulator, we can control how many PSIs are PSI'd. You're welcome. I'm going to squash your dog. I like that, Linda. Wow, my eyes are itching. What are you doing in here? Here we go. Pop, pop, 
It would be cool to do the B in Cool Silver and Chrome and Chameleon Wings. That's true. That's very true. So, yeah. Um, here's the point in our um, live feed where we ask you guys to please subscribe, ring the bell, and join us on all of these social media platforms to see what we're up to. If you're interested in resin or any pigments that we use in paste or any cradle boards that we use on the channel, hit us up at artistldeath.com. Also, if you are interested in any of the other products that we don't carry, you can find them down in the description box below this video in our Amazon link. Doink, doink, doink. Doink, doink. Erica, a while back you said you were looking for a color. What was it? Evelyn, a color for hair? I'm confused. Uh, Miss. Okay, Cujo. Stop it. Look, he's smiling. He knows. Stop. Shoot me a message, Evelyn. Now he's really doing it. Okay, well, settle down. See, you start doing that. And you're going to start doing it for real. Mm -hmm. Um, do an elephant. I would love to do an elephant. If you guys are interested in Ollie, a.k.a. Um, Sir Inks a lot, he is currently available. Did we set a price for him yet? Um, I would say... I think we said six fifty yesterday. Are we amending that? Uh, yeah, I, I would. I would say six fifty. If somebody wants to pay more, they're more than welcome to pay more. Or if somebody wants to pay higher. Same thing. I guess we'll be doing a bidding if you want. If people are interested in it. Oh yeah, Evelyn, I still haven't found a good purple shampoo that... I use a purple shampoo when I have just regular blonde to take the ash out, but, um... I already used y'all about Ollie. Oh, JJ, were you... JJ, were you... Were you wanting the... Are you wanting Ollie, JJ? Did I, am I confused? I this already... Look at you smiling at me. Look at you smiling at me. He's like, I'm just in love. Oh, JJ texted us about um, Ollie, so he may not be available right now. If JJ... I don't know. I don't have one. It may be on the red phone. Um, yes, yeah, Moose being a sweet little boy. See how he's not coughing anymore because he's getting attention? Crazy little boy dog. I can't even hey, imagine that? how stressful it would be, Sam, to brush so. out dreadlocks. Um, so yeah, if JJ called shotgun on it, then he did. I'm gonna go check the phone. He wants Ollie. Well, 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 looky there. Okie dokie. There you have it. That just means we might have to do another one. She's going to check on her right meow. guys thank you so so much for coming in and seeing what we're up to today hope you learned something hope you had a good time have an awesome safe saturday be kind to one another you never know what someone's going through and we'll see you guys <gasps> what did i do
You just. Oh, you're over here. No, you're not. We'll see you guys tomorrow, probably earlier in the day. We'll add it to um, ATD's Poor People so that you guys can know when we're going to go live. Um, exactly what time. Okay, I know it. We're going. <laughs> oh, thank you. I know, I know it. All right, you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. I said bye. He said bye. He said bye. He said bye. Look at the little six fifty.